why I don't call the cops. Hey, I'm Nandi. I am a poet and I'm from Detroit. Shattered into a constellation of broken light. If for three hours I plead for him to let me in, even if his brain refuses to get a hold of itself, I will not call. The reason why I go to my desk is because when I wake up in the morning, something has compelled me to write. And I feel like there are a lot of things that I'm kind of deciphering a puzzle with when I'm trying to write. And so whether it's how can I get, how can I figure out a way to duplicate the cadence of electronic music in a poem or recently how to how do you write a poem about loneliness that isn't just a sad awful poem uh the question itself is what compels me to write how can i trust they won't treat him like a corpse i think that there are a lot of things out there a lot of questions out there a lot of curiosities that i have about the world that the only way in which i can somewhat figure them out or sift through all the muck of life is to just fig is to just write about it um whether it be about race or dancing i want to figure it out i want to figure out how my words can somehow approach this thing that i'm witnessing in the world one of my projects is my first my first uh poetry collection tapping out and that's a collection of poems that is based on my fanatical obsession with Mexican wrestling. I really love to use the choreography and the vocabulary and the language of the sport in order to really interrogate deeper things like uh, gender, violence, and even um, and a, and a lot of my poems have to do with race. As a result of watching a single video of a police killing five times in one day, a blood washer patient, usually a father, develops an unexplainable urge to wash sidewalks. The second project that I've been working on since I've arrived has been um, a response to the way in which our urban cities have been blowing up in this last year. I'm calling the series of poems American Family Syndrome and it tries to get at what is the effect of this kind of policing that a lot of people in, in um, minority communities have to um, have been exposed to for a very long time. It tries to get at what is the trauma of that exposure. Some of the poems will reference things like uh, what kind of psychological disorders come as a result of watching YouTube videos and not just knowing the truth about um, an abuse. What does it mean to reenact these kinds of assaults over and over again? And what are the, what are the, what can, what kind of psychological disorders that can, that can affect Facebook and Twitter for two weeks. Ultimately, it is best for the patient to submit himself to a psychological observation for 48 hours. Right. So the last project that I'm working on it's really dear to me because I'm, I'm able to think about this in, within my displacement and that's Dancing Through the Night, which is a collaboration between me and some sound artists um, from Detroit, Michigan, and where we've been working on a poetry and performance project. I've been studying how poets were able to use jazz um, as an influence on their own poetics and thinking of how to figure out the um, the structural sound of jazz and how to bring that into po into poetry. It's not easy at all when you think about techno because techno doesn't really have like a stable structure to like stick to, but it's been really nice thinking about what was happening in Detroit history around the time of this creation. So I've been thinking a lot about the first black mayor of Detroit and what it means to be coming from a group of people who produced music and basically had to make the choice to leave Detroit in order to gain some kind of um, attention. That is a big theme in my work as a recently, how I can use being in a place that is so dear to me in my own work. 
Remember that time when they found Cousin Rosa in the east side carjacking some woman, said she stepped right in front of a silver caprice and pulled that frightened lady like a rag right out of her car? Remember how her daughter had to go down to the precinct, had to explain that her mother got them voices? Remember her brother, that slim shell of a boy, how he put bullets in her mother and left himself shot and dead in the drive? Coward, Uncle Otha said. Devil said, Mama. Hyperpaired nerd schizophrenic bipolar disorder said the docs. And remember that girl he loved? How when she heard the news, how she dropped all her body, rubber band legs and horse shoulders, dropped them like a sack of oranges in the middle of the den. Remember how we all came to the city to put them in the ground? How Rosa refused to buy a coffin, said she built boxes from the planks of her picket fence. How she, how each board carried the sound of her family's southern snark grief. Each of her dead meshed in the wood grain. And who hasn't seen death, that ruthless engineer, stack the bricks of his rickety house, one broken brain on top of another. Rosa's uncle took his wife's life by knife. And her cousin Robert still hold a bullet from when his mother tried and failed. Death can be relentless with his building, Caney. You remember Rosa in the street screaming down at that woman in her car, something about the car, or was it something about her brother, I mean my granddad, or was it about my aunt, or that kid down the street, or...